Okay, this is the second part of our scratch maze game. And in this one, we're going to have a go at taking the basic structure we created last time and actually try to make it into a proper game. And in order to do that, we're going to add some obstacles and rewards for the sprite to collect or avoid as it navigates the level. Some scores and lives. And in order to do that, we're going to create our first variable. So it's a piece of code where the quantity value changes during the game and an end screen so that there's an actual proper end to the game. Okay, in our last session, we got to the point where we created a background, we created the sprite, which is the crocodile, and if we press the green, the crocodile can go to the right, then go to the left, he swaps costume as he does, but if he touches the edge of the screen, he gets sent back to the start, and he displays a message showing regret at being sent back to the start. What we want to do now is we want to add in some ex extra elements. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some extra sprites. And for this one, I'm just going to use some of the ones that already exist in Scratch. So I'm going to go to choose a sprite. And we could say he wants to collect something. So in this case, I'm going to feed him some apples. I'm not sure crocodiles normally like apples, but this crocodile is going to like it, this apple. So we've got an apple there. It's a bit big. So we're going to reduce the size down. We have something like 60. I'm going to place the apple in the position I want it to be in. Like on the first bit where we put the crocodile in, we want this sprite to appear in a particular place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the events block. I'm going to choose a when the green flag's clicked, so at the start of the game this happens. I want this to show, so I'm going to use the show button. And I'm going to go back to the motion one. And again, you can see its grid position is at x15. Four and the Y position is minus 64, so I'm going to pull a Go2 block in there. Now again, the advantage like last time is if I move that and press the green flag, it will go back there, so when we reset the game, it's in the right place. At the moment, that's not very interesting, because if I take my crocodile and walk past it, nothing happens. In fact, I don't get past it because I got it wrong. But so we want the crocodile to be able to eat that apple. So what we want to do here is we want to slightly different block. Now we could add it onto here, but I'm going to do it as a separate one to keep it neat. So I'm going to do again when the green flag's clicked. This time we're going to be asking it to be constantly looking, so we're going to use a forever loop. And we're going to put in an if block. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use the sensing one. So if this is touching, now we're programming the apple here. So if it's touching Mr. Crocodile, we're going to choose from there, Mr. Crocodile. Then what we want it to do is we want it to hide. And it will look like it's been eaten. So we're going to go into the looks choices. I'm going to choose hide. Again, we're going to press the green flag to show this works. You know, it's a slight glitch there where it didn't appear the first time. So I just press green again. So I'm going to take the crocodile across. This time when Mr. Crocodile touches the apple, the apple should disappear. Now, on the crocodile side, we could add something else in. We could say, so we could do the same kind of block. We could say, when green flag clicked, control. We'll do exactly the same thing, so it's a forever. And then it's an if loop, or an if statement, rather. And use the same sensing option, so if it's touching the apple this time, so doing it from the other side, we could put in a message. So we could say something like, say... Yum, that was tasty. And again, if we press the green flag this time, press it again, we go across, the crocodile, <laughs> not very good at my own game apparently, crocodile touches the apple and we should get a message. Now the reason we don't get a message is because the um, apple disappeared before we had a chance to deal with it. So what we could do is we could go back into the apple at this point and we could go back into the control and we could put in a wait before it hides. Not a very long wait, maybe something like 0 0.5 seconds. Then we press the green flag again and again. And go across. And go up. He says, yum, that was tasty and it disappears. Now, what we also want to do now is we want to award some points for this. So to do that, we're going to go into the um, 
variables block and we're going to create a new variable and this one I'm going to call score but you can call it whatever you want and you can see it shows up at the top here now because Mr. Crocodile is the main character I'm going to set most of my code in there so again we're going to go back into the event I'm going to set another when green flag clicked again this could all be on the same one but I'm just trying to keep them separate to keep it a little bit easier to see what we're doing here so when the green flag flags clicked so at the start of the game what we want to do is we want to set the variable and the variable we've chosen here is score to zero so they've got no points and then when Mr. Crocodile touches the apple so we've already got that so in the green flag here forever if Mr. Crocodile is touching the apple then what we want to do is we want to change the score by one so we'll put that there and then we'll press green flag again and again and this time if we go across and go up he says yum that was tasty and we should get well we should except for I didn't change that to score so let's do that again okay so this time we should touch the apple it says yum that was tasty and the score changes to one now that's not very exciting in itself but what we can now start to do is we can now start to duplicate these apples so if we produce apple 2 and apple 3 press the green flag again we can now move some of these apples into new positions so that's apple 3 apparently let's put that nearest the end and this one's going to be apple 2 we'll put that somewhere there we'll need to change these positions because otherwise they'll try to go back to that first one so we're going to pull that off there go back to the motion pull in their new positions do the same with apple 3 that's apple actually pull apple and we'll pull in the one for that one and we'll do the one for that one while we're here just to make sure they're all in the right place okay this time if Mr. Crocodile goes around you should see if he hits this one the apple disappears but at the moment he's not getting a score so we'll need to deal with that in a second again this one disappears but he doesn't get a score for that one but he does gain a point or a score point for that one and the reason for that one is that at the moment we've set it that if he touches apple not apple 2 or apple 3 so probably the easiest way to do this is right click on this block and duplicate it and duplicate it again so we've got three blocks of code and then we change this one so it's on apple 2 and this one so it's on apple 3 so he's now got a block of code when he's on apple on apple 2 and on apple 3 where if he touches those points then what he gains the score so we can now press green again and this time when he goes around we should potentially be able to get three points now you could argue this is actually not that hard since it's actually impossible to miss them but on your game you could position these into a more difficult places in order to make it a bit more of a game okay so we've gone around we've gained three points sometimes though we might want to avoid something so let's put a different sprite in this time and let's put in something that might not like crocodiles what should we have let's choose a bear and again my bear's a bit big so I'm going to reduce him down something like 50 I'm going to reduce him down even further there we go tiny little bear I'm going to try and put him somewhere where I can actually get past him I think I can get past him there if I'm careful maybe maybe put him a little bit further up now the bear is going to cost us lives so we're going to do the same thing with the bear we want exactly the same things to happen when the game starts we want him to be in a particular position and we want him to be visible so we're going to start with show we're going to go to the motion blocks and we're going to set the x and y position there so when we click on it he comes into position this time when he touches um, when the crocodile touches the bear we want the crocodile to lose a life and to be sent back so in order to do that I'm going to go back to Mr. Crocodile we're going to go back to variables I'm going to produce another variable and this time we're going to call it lives you can set that per character I just set it for everybody at the moment and we're doing the same kind of blocks we've done before so when the green flags clicked forever and again we want to 
if and then block. We want a sensing block in here, so we're going to go back into the sensing options and we're going to say if the crocodile is touching the bear, then what we want to do is we want to change the lives. So we go to variables and we're going to go and change lives. Now we want him to lose a life, so we're going to press minus one. Now that's fine, except for the moment he starts with zero. So again, we want to go back up here. And when we've got this one here, which when we green flag click, we set the score to zero. Let's also set the lives on that same block. So we're going to set lives, and I'm going to give him three lives now. Because we can carry that on to the next level, where that gets a bit more difficult. So this time we press the green flag. As the crocodile navigates his way around, you see one of the problems actually with the way I've done this is the bear is more or less hidden under that um, score sign, but we can deal with that in a second. Now, if he goes past this, this is fine, but if he touches the bear, okay, we should find that we lose a life. Now, I think what the problem is here at the moment, he touches the red bar before he touches that. So let's move the bear into a more difficult position, somewhere like that, where it actually can't get past this at the moment. Okay, and we'll just change that position on there. We'll put a new position in. We'll repeat that. So again, he can go around. As we touch the apples, the apples should disappear. And his score should go up. And you can change that message each time. It doesn't have to be the same. And this time when he touches the bear, we should find his lives go down. Now the problem here is that you'll see the lives go down enormously. So one of the things we want to happen is after he touches the bear, we want to move him. So we're going to do exactly what we did with when, when he was sensing the red block. So we're going to say, if he touches the bear, change life by minus one, but then we're also going to move him back to the start. So I'm going to press the green flag there, and we're going to put this go to block in. And by moving him, that should stop him endlessly losing lives, but it should also make the game a bit harder. So again, we'll play our way through this. We're going to go up. I'm going to grab those apples. It doesn't matter if you go too fast, they'll just catch up. It's because you've got the half second delay and they don't appear immediately. This time we touch the bear. Okay, you should see we've lost one life, but we've gone back to the start. And if we keep doing that, we'll lose more and more lives. So you can actually drag it up to prove it, so you can see it loses that. The problem at the moment is he'll keep on losing lives, even when he gets into negative figures. So what we now need to do is we need to have a piece of code in here that when the lives get below a certain amount, something else happens. So what we do here is we go back into the events block, choose a new green flag, choose a new forever loop, so this is constantly sensing it, choose a new if. But this time what we're looking for is we're looking for an operator. So what we're saying is if the lives get below a particular figure, so what we're going to say here is if we go back into the variables, so if lives are below one, so basically if they're zero or lower, and the reason for doing it that way is if by accident we get down to minus one or minus two, it will still count, then we want something to happen, and really what we want to happen is we want a new backdrop. So I'm going to click on the backdrops and go to backdrops, and you can do a much better one than I'm going to do, but I'm just going to very quickly create one that says game over, just so that we know that this is a game over one. I'm also going to rename it as Game Over in the section here so that the names of the levels and sprites match. I'm going to go back to Mr. Crocodile. Now, this means we've got to do a few little changes here. So the start of the game, we'd set his position and we'd set his costume, but we now also need to set in the looks one the background. So the background starts on the first background, which is level one. Now we want to change it, so when we created this green flag forever, if lives get to below one, then what we want to do is we want to switch the backdrop to game over. So if we press play now and navigate the crocodile round, and obviously you can produce more than one bear, and you can put them in a much better position than where I've put them so that you don't uh, get stuck behind them. I hit the bear, I lose a life, I lose another life, and another life, you should see we're now on the game over screen. The only problem at this point is, of course, the bear is still there, and so is Mr. Crocodile. So what we want to do with all of these sprites is we want to add one extra piece here, and that's this. So we go into the events option, we go when backdrop switches to, and we choose game over, 
And what we want to do is we want it to hide so that if we get a, um, a game over situation, we don't still have all our characters there. Now, we can do the same with all the others, or we can just drag this across. I'm going to drag that into the apple, and I'm going to drag it into the apple too. And you can see it kind of moves around a bit as we do it, and drop that into the bear. I'm going to press the green flag to start to get it. This time I'm just going to drag it up so you can see. So we lose one life, we lose two lives, we lose three lives, and we get the game over screen. And at that point we're starting to get a game. What we'll need to do next is produce a new level, and in order to do that we'll need to produce an obstacle or an object or a sprite that when the crocodile touches transports us onto a new level, and at that point we can start to make this into a much better game. But you already have a score, you already have lives, you already have a working sprite, and you already have multiple backgrounds. So this is starting to develop quite well. Thank you for watching.